The first week of the Summer Showdown was interesting to say the least. This meta shakeup, as well as a lack of practice time, has led to all sorts of chaos. It feels like most games are currently up in the air, and there's no telling how crazy things are going to get now that APAC is back. The wild tournament continues. Let's dive straight into the traditional weekly preview plus predictions here on the channel. And now that APAC is back, they'll be the ones to start us off. And what better way to begin than with Shanghai taking on a charged team with a lot of new roster additions. My curiosity is peaking here. With what we saw in the West, it feels like the not-so-great teams have way better odds of taking down somebody at the top. But it's not just that. How are the new charge players going to do in their debut? And how do the dragons play in this kind of meta? Will who are you see playtime again? Is Void and or Fate going to be explosive on Junker Queen? There's a lot of questions, but not a lot of answers. I could probably sit here the entire day and theorize what teams need to do in order to win and who could be good at what, but that'll do us no good when we haven't seen anybody play yet. So with that in mind, I'll just pick the more trustworthy roster. No matter how many changes we see out of the Guangzhou charge, the Dragons are still going to be favored in this series 9 times out of 10. Coordination is essential in this meta, as it's the only real way you secure kills for the most part, and the dragons are obviously more likely to pull this off, so I feel pretty comfortable picking them in a sweep. The charge essentially feel like a new roster in some aspects again, and because of that, I think it's going to be a bit difficult for them to take down some of these top tier-ish rosters, at least at the start. I think that Choice A1 in a hard Genji meta could be promising, maybe Kron could be good at Junker Queen, and perhaps some of their other new guys could make a difference. They could sound promising on paper, but how about we watch them play before we get excited? Speaking of getting excited, the Hongzhou Spark will then take on the Seoul Dynasty in the second match of this week, and since their rivalry has been pretty interesting this year, let's go ahead and call this one of our key matches of the week. This is such a mystery game. You never quite know who's going to show up when Seoul and the Spark play each other. It's quite random, and this time I'd say is no different, especially considering this new meta. They each have similar strengths and weaknesses, and I think on paper, their DPS will likely pop off, and you might have some questions about how they play in a brawly meta. It's a bit tough to kind of gauge this matchup, but I actually prefer Soul in a 3-1, believe it or not, and for one very simple reason. This meta requires a lot of coordination, and since Soul have a fully Korean lineup, this is just a situation where I trust them slightly more to make those proper calls with one another and have the appropriate teamwork to get it done. It's not to say that the Spark can't do it, there is a good chance they can for sure, but... Things can change pretty fast, especially with this particular meta, as there's a lot of randomness here going on, but that's kind of who I think comes out on top. The Dynasty, I think they might just be more prepared and slightly more trustworthy. Anyway, starting off North America for the week is the Vancouver Titans versus the New York Excelsior. And due to their records, you can't really consider this a significant game, but it could still be interesting nonetheless. Both New York and Vancouver showed off a huge competitive spirit last week while netting one win apiece. Their confidence is growing rapidly now that everybody is on an even playing field, so I'd say this game is winnable for each side. The Titans might be able to go on their first win streak since early 2020, and this especially goes for them if Aspire can continue to play at the level that we saw last week. New York aren't exactly this super amazing team that are difficult to beat, but I still feel like they impressed more last week as they beat a solid Houston team and push the Dallas Fuel reasonably hard. The Titans, I think, are just still a bit less proven, especially after defeating a pretty dysfunctional Paris team. Almost defeating Toronto was cool, but I'd say that the NYXL playing decently against Dallas and defeating Houston is just a bit more impressive. And because Yaki has also been playing at the top of his game recently, I'll be picking the NYXL in a 5-map series. My confidence in their abilities to play around their tank is a bit higher currently. The Titans, I think, still look a bit shaky with decisiveness, I mean more than New York. It's too much about waiting for a DPS to do something, and I think that hesitation will cost them against a more explosive New York team. Next up, we have the Shock versus the Uprising, and while this is not a key match of the week, it still is quite interesting because if you missed the news, Boston have acquired Mag, and this could potentially be his debut playing alongside some of his former competition and contenders. On the surface, he seems like a good fit on this roster, so I'd like to see how he does if he ends up playing. Aside from that, though, 
I'd say there's not a lot to talk about here, as Boston's win against Atlanta last week was good, but maybe a bit unimpressive seeing as that team in general kind of struggled last week, and considering what happened when they played London, it's hard to give them much of a chance against one of the best teams in the league. So, with that in mind, the Shock should be taking care of business in a sweep, as Proper and Kilo, they've adjusted beautifully to this new meta, and I fully expect them to give their team the edge. And that's on top of the fact that San Francisco obviously have the better support line. The Shock usually beat down on the weaker teams pretty easily, and I expect that to happen here once again. Ending day one is the Toronto Defiant versus the Dallas Fuel, and I'd say that both teams are riding quite the high heading into week two, just thinking about the achievements that they had last week and everything. I, for one, though, favor Dallas here, as the Fuel showed off two different styles that could work to their advantage. They can be more team-oriented by playing around Doha, as we saw a lot of the week, or they can play more aggressively if they choose to field Sparkle. And it's clear that their hive mind mentality works great in a super chaotic meta such as this one. Toronto feel like a less fleshed out version of Dallas, you know? Their Genji and Brig play just wasn't as inspiring to me. This especially goes for the Brig though, which disappoints me, as Twilight still is not great on this hero despite his previous experience. He looked like the weak link in that Vancouver series in particular. And if he gets exposed against the Titans, things will certainly be worse for him against the Dallas Fuel. The Fuel will overwhelm in a four-map series. They feel a bit more fleshed out, like I was saying. There's more confidence in their play, and they've also beaten some stronger opponents. This Defiant team didn't really do anything special yet, so this is going to be their first real test to see if they can hang in there with some of the best teams. If they can play well in this particular series, then maybe it's time to take them seriously. Heading into day two, we start with the Seoul Dynasty versus the Chengdu Hunters. And let me tell ya, I can feel some upset potential here. I'm of the belief that Chengdu could be kind of scary. In a hard Genji Sojourn meta, they have what it takes to dominate. In my opinion, one singular factor is going to decide if Chengdu are really good or really bad in this meta. How will they play in a super brawly composition such as this one? The peak of Chengdu's success over the years has always revolved around Wrecking Ball and Total Chaos. They've always needed it to thrive for some reason, and without it, I'm just not sure if they have it in them to consistently compete at the top level, especially when considering that this comp is like a must-use right now. You've got to use all of the specific heroes we've been seeing. Playing separate is kind of what they're known for. On the surface, I'd say that the Hunter's Playmakers could carry them big time, but without that reassurance of knowing their coordination is in a good spot, it's difficult to put total faith in them. So for that, I'm going with a 3-1 in favor of Soul. While I don't feel ridiculously confident about Soul in this meta, I just feel like brawling together better suits their particular playstyle. That's when people like Profit and even Creative tend to thrive. I could be making a mistake putting this much faith in them, especially after their recent collapse, but that's just how I feel. Game number two on Saturday for APAC will be the Hongzhou Spark versus the Shanghai Dragons, which will be key match number two for this week. Much like in their rivalry with Seoul, things have gone back and forth between Hangzhou and Shanghai. It's been a pretty interesting series, and I suspect that could continue here since everything is so up in the air. When it comes to deciding the victor, the thought process of Hangzhou with the other game that I talked about earlier still applies. Their level of coordination in this meta will decide everything. How will things go with their decision making and being on the same page? If they're fine, they could dominate and go undefeated this week, but I'm just not sure. And it's because I have these doubts that I'm picking the Dragons in 5. Admittedly, I'm a bit concerned about how the Dragons do in a Genji meta since they tend to not be that good at it historically, but again, I just think that the superior synergy will win the day here, since it's so critical to have everything working in unison. Enough about that, though. Let's talk about the final APAC match of Saturday, which will be the Valiant versus the Philly Fusion. And I'm just gonna get straight to the point. I kinda dig Philly in this meta. Aside from the obvious strength of DPS, I feel that this team has thrived from playing close up together in, like, those death ball -y compositions. I don't know, man. Playing around a Junker Queen sounds good for Philly. Bellos Rio in particular has proven himself in these Brawly comps and could end up being a huge difference maker. And we all know that Aim God is not afraid to get his hands dirty either, so Philly might not hesitate much at all, which could give them a massive advantage over some of these weaker teams. And that's where the Valiant ultimately suffer to me. They have the same potential thing holding them back as the Spark, but... 
To an even worse extent, I'd say, the Valiant are less talented and have struggled more, especially on the damage roll as of late, and I'm not super sure if they'll be able to play around Marvel well enough if he ends up being the starter. I could see a lot of coordination issues coming back to bite the Valiant in this type of meta, so for that reason, my pick will be the Fusion in a 3-0. The Valiant usually are a pretty tricky team to get a grasp on, but I just get the feeling that this meta could lead to a cold start as they learn to adjust. Both teams are heading in different directions to me, and I believe that the final score will reflect upon that. Next, we have the London Spitfire versus the Houston Outlaws, and this could be a decent game. Both teams had their ups and downs last week, and also only have this one particular matchup to prep for. So for that, I'd say that London have a chance to maybe turn some heads if they can improve and come in with a good game plan. Houston had a lot of weak moments to look at from the film. However, the level of confidence you're giving London in this kind of meta is shaky at best. They had one really good game, but also a really bad one, and their really bad game was against a Florida team that aren't that great either at this meta, so that doesn't do them any favors. In general, you've gotta prefer the Houston Outlaws. The NYXL hiccup was a disaster for sure, but that's a game they'll probably win 9 times out of 10, and the fact that they beat the Gladiators shows that they seriously mean business. And something else to mention is the Houston back and front lines were just more inspiring last week. Dante impressed me more than Hottie on Junker Queen, and I kinda see Lastro as a potential X-Factor on Brig in this meta, he was impressing me big time. I'm kinda digging the Outlaws in this meta, so I'm gonna pick them in a 3-1 over the Spitfire. Their supports have adjusted well, I think Dante still putting in the work at tank, and the DPS should be reliable no matter what. I believe that they are currently ahead of schedule compared to London in a lot of ways, and they should only get better as they clean up last week's mistakes. Now for the huge one, aka the final key match of the week, the LA Gladiators versus the San Francisco Shock for, believe it or not, the fourth time this year already. As it currently stands, the Shock are up 2-1 in the series, and have showed way less struggles last week compared to their opponents, but regardless, both teams are absolutely loaded, so you already know that it's going to be a fun one. And what makes it interesting is both teams could be facing a good bit of pressure to help spice things up. The Shock face the pressure of trying to remain undefeated in the regular season against one of their biggest rivals, but the Glads face the pressure of trying to rebound after a disappointing week. And surely the idea of what happened the last time they met in the regular season could be messing with their heads. We already saw them come up short against Dallas a second time here in the regular season, so the idea of them doing it against the Shock 2 isn't really all that far-fetched. And who knows, maybe the disappearance of Patty Pan due to an apparent wrist injury from what I heard could end up making them lose their way even more. In general, the Shock looked and felt more confident last week despite this being an excellent meta for the Glads on paper. And you know what? The Glads tend to lose to their biggest rivals here in the regular season, so I'ma stick with that theme yet again as I pick the Shock in a 5 mapper. Maybe it's a little silly to give them the edge just because of that, but sometimes patterns in this league are something that I ignore and I end up regretting it. The mental game is huge in this league, and clearly the Shock are in the better place in that regard, so why not, right? Concluding Saturday is the Florida Mayhem versus the Washington Justice, and while this isn't quite key match worthy, it's obviously worth paying attention attention to, because I don't know what's going to happen at the time of me recording this, but the Justice should be having their entire roster change, and if that did end up coming through, then there's going to be a lot of familiar names on there that could be fun to watch on the stage again if the rumors are true. Now with that in mind, they still would be a new team, with little to no experience playing against league teams this year, so it's tough to see this even being close. Florida may not be perfect, but they've got the experience and have proven they can take out vulnerable opponents with relative ease. Florida should be winning this in a 3-0. Don't get me wrong, it'd be exciting to watch guys from Team Peps if that's the Justice new team take the stage. I think we'd all love to see Ben Best and FD God and whatnot be there again. But the thing is, they weren't exactly killing it in the most recent tournament of EU contenders or anything, and now that they're taking the jump to the Overwatch League, the result seems fairly obvious. And let's say that the Justice end up keeping their roster still for whatever reason, well in that case I still think Florida wins just because I know there's a lot of drama going on there, and that would affect their mindset big time. That's enough about that though, the result's the same either way in my eyes. Moving on to Sunday now, we start with the Guangzhou Charge versus the LA Valiant. 
I'm not sure if I'd really call this a key match or anything, but I can feel the upset potential. The Valiant aren't exactly cruising right now, and the Charge did make some interesting roster changes. If Krong ends up being a good Junker Queen, I genuinely believe the Charge end up winning this game. I know that a decent portion of this roster still haven't played together yet in a real game, but there's a lot of playmaking potential going on here. And since they take on a Valiant team who also won't have godlike teamwork, there's more more room for the big playmakers to take over this game. In particular, I really do like the Charge's DPS in this situation, and aside from all of their new guys actually having Overwatch League experience in some way, shape, or form, aside from Aprita because technically he never played a game for the Hunters, but their backline synergy should also be looking very improved, as both Xerneas and Farway played together on the Hunters back in the day. It's a bit of a risk to go down this route, I admit that, but let's go 3-2 in favor of the Charge. They really could do it. The Charge could be a sleeper team that maybe has a few decent sets this stage, and I think the Valiant might learn that the hard way, unless I'm really, really overestimating Guangzhou slash underestimating the Valiant. There's a good chance that I'm wrong about this one, I'll admit that, especially if Dia pops off on Ash, but I'm willing to take that risk. Concluding APAC for the week now will be the Hunters versus the Fusion. So far, Philly's luck against Chengdu has not been very good. It's the one team they cannot seem to figure out. But unlike the Gladiators, this is their third time playing this rival. And based off of what I've seen in previous years historically, it's that third attempt where a team who shouldn't lose to the underdog finally figures them out. It's a weird pattern that we've seen play out a lot of different times. It's not every single time, but it's somewhat consistent. And in general, this feels more like a Philly meta to me. It better suits them. That question of if Chengdu can play well in a Brawl meta has yet to be determined, so my pick is 3-2 Fusion. I believe that this game should be close because that's kind of a Chengdu thing to do, and their chances are especially good when you have Leave and Jinmu playing their signature characters and everything, but Philly have thrived in these situations as of late, so I'd like to think they find a way to get it done. The third time's the charm. Now for the final NA matches of the week. First, we have Dallas versus Boston, and to be honest, I'm not expecting all that much here. The Dallas Fuel have impressed quite a bit early on. They're the obvious favorites, and you'd expect them to get the job done pretty easily. The Hive Mind meta is pretty tough to stop, especially when even their secondary playmakers like Edison, for example, are firing on all cylinders. In Boston, I mean, they were kind of weird last week. I don't really care if Mag gives them higher upside. None of that matters. Their one accomplishment last week was beating an Atlanta team who were kind of struggling. It leaves a lot of doubts on the table still as to what their potential is. The Fuel are in a good position to sweep this one. When Dallas get on a roll, they are tough to slow down, and I doubt that an inconsistent team like Boston puts a stop to it. The Atlanta Reign versus the Paris Eternal are up next, and this game gets viewed in the same light as Washington versus Florida. There's a curiosity factor since Paris are practically rocking a brand new roster, but you know the likelihood of this being close is rather small. A brand new team just recently formed is playing an Overwatch League roster who have been together for months. It would be very nice to see all of these new Paris players show out a bit, but we shouldn't expect a lot this early on. The Reign, in my opinion, will win this 3-0. This should be pretty easy for them too. Regardless of their early struggles in this meta, this one's kind of a gimme. It's an experience diff, plain and simple. And that leads us into the final match of the weekend. The LA Gladiators take on the Toronto Defiant. Let's keep it short and sweet. At this point, LA is going to be fed up with losing games, especially if they lose to San Francisco. And what better way to take out your anger than by making a mid-tier roster like the Defiant your punching bag? There is no universe where the Glads lose more than two or three in a row. I refuse to believe it. They're a title contender. They have smart players. They have good coaches. They just have to adjust. As for Toronto, my belief kind of comes from the same place as the Dallas game as to where they currently stand. They're going in a good direction, but they're still a little unproven. This is definitely the right time to go out there and show that you're legit, but I don't think it happens as I think their backline's going to get overwhelmed by Funny Astro and Skewed as the Glads win 3-1. If the Glads can't get out of their own head still, then maybe this could be interesting, but it's so hard to see them staying down for that long. They have been notoriously good at bouncing back from adversity this year, and there's a good chance that this time is no different. It would be cool to see a good match unfold, especially because Toronto's trying to make their own homestand later this month, but I have my doubts about that. 
But anyway, that's going to do it for this week's preview and prediction video. What are your thoughts on some of the big games this week? And what do you think is going to happen in APAC? Do you think it's going to be chaotic or pretty controlled? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, consider hitting like and subscribe as it helps out the channel a ton. And until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.